In this video, we'll delve into the events that occurred in the U.S. state of Georgia. No one saw the 31-year-old Indiana lawyer since 7.17 p.m. on February 24, 2022, when a surveillance camera recorded her outside her mother-in-law's home in Johns Creek. Police and her family have put a lot of effort into finding out where Sierra went and what happened to her. Sierra Locklear from Cleveland, Georgia, was a cheerful and ambitious woman. According to her mother, Kelly Locklear, Sierra wanted people to take her seriously, so she was tough. Following in the footsteps of her mother, who was a paralegal, she became a lawyer. Sierra grew up in Georgia and dreamed of living in Atlanta one day. She was a Georgia girl, Kelly said. Atlanta was her plan all along. To get there, though, Sierra had to leave the Peach State. She went to the University of Tennessee for college and then attended law school at Florida State University. In the end, Sierra became a lawyer specializing in insurance defense. Talking about her daughter, Kelly said the following words. She overcame and pushed through, Kelly said. She was happy. She was energetic. She was loving. She was extremely driven in her career. In October 2020, Sierra met Xavier Brayland via Tinder. Their relationship developed very rapidly. The couple got married after six months. By this time, Sierra was pregnant. According to court records, Sierra provided legal assistance to Xavier in his dispute with his ex-wife. After some time, the newlyweds decided to move to Carmel, Indiana, to start a new life there. Sierra got a job at a law firm and, at the end of 2021, gave birth to a son, whom the couple named Jackson. From the outside, Xavier and Sierra looked like a perfect couple. But in reality, the problems in their relationship began soon after they met. Shelby Campbell, Sierra's cousin, said the problems between the couple happened after the first dates. Sierra told Xavier she didn't want to have any more contact with him. But her future husband wasn't the kind of person who could accept rejection. Instead, Xavier showed up at her apartment uninvited and sat near her door. He started sending her threatening messages because he saw her with another man. Sierra told him she would contact the authorities if he didn't stop. In the end, she gave him another chance. Six months later, they got married. Shelby and Sierra were best friends and texted each other every day. Sierra shared her feelings with her and said that she was afraid of her husband. For example, one of her messages said, Well, I'm struggling with it in a very big way. I don't want to give up on someone I love and just abandon him and our family. But at the same time, I feel like behavior gets progressively worse and not better. So to me, if this is how it is now, then how is it going to be in the future? Plus, he used to feel bad when he said ugly stuff, and lately he isn't even sorry for his behavior. It's like he blames me for it, and is basically like I did this because you made me. Sierra said her husband would be responsible if something happened to her. Shelby says she often told Sierra to leave her husband, but Sierra knew that if she was going to leave, she needed to do it strategically. Here's another screenshot of the text between Shelby and Sierra. It is obvious that Sierra was afraid of her husband. Shelby Campbell said the texts she shared are only some examples of what was going on between Sierra and her husband. She did call the police multiple times. The police were called to her residence both in Georgia and Indiana multiple times, Campbell said. By the time the police would get there, she would have calmed down enough to where she was lying for him. Shelby said an investigator had even called Sierra's mother after one of those instances and told her that he knew she was lying about what was happening when she called 911 and that he had seen the same pattern many times. He was worried that something would happen to her. Sierra was planning to leave her husband. She opened a secret bank account where she transferred money. The woman was determined. In the messages, Sierra wrote that she loved her husband but at the same time couldn't afford to stay in this relationship.
Her parents, Kelly and Nick Locklairs, knew their daughter's family life was far from ideal. They wanted Sierra to break up with Xavier and said she could always return to a safe place, meaning her home. Sierra's fateful trip to Georgia started when she and Xavier loaded their baby and big dog into Sierra's 2017 white Volkswagen Tiguan and made the 11-hour drive south. According to her family, Sierra arrived at her parents' house on February 19. She spent the night with relatives who hadn't seen her since she moved to Indiana. It looked like a short trip to meet with her family. However, Sierra decided she would not return to Indiana anymore. Xavier was also interested in this trip because his mother lived in Georgia too, but he didn't know that Sierra was not going to come back. She told her mother she was going to find a job in Georgia. She had also told her parents that her husband's abusive behavior was getting worse and she was getting a divorce. Sierra appeared at Nick and Kelly's house in Cleveland, Georgia on Saturday, February 19th. The woman stayed at her parents' house until Sunday. It was a long-awaited meeting after a long separation. She again confirmed she wanted to divorce her husband and would not return to Indiana. On Sunday, February 20th, Sierra left her parents' house to pick up Jackson, her son, from her mother-in-law's house, located about an hour away in Johns Creek, Georgia. Shelby Campbell said one of the last texts she received from her cousin said, I'm at Xavier's mom's house. He won't give me Jackson, so I'm waiting to get him so I can leave. On Monday, February 21st at 11.17 p.m., Sierra texted her father, Nick, and said, I'll be back in the morning if that's okay. Of course it's okay, you don't have to ask, Nick replied to her. The next day, when he hadn't heard from Sierra, Nick said he reached back out to her, and she said everything was okay. She mentioned she had been feeling a little sick, Nick said he contacted her again on Wednesday to ask if she was feeling better. He didn't get a response. He texted her again on Thursday, February 24th. No one responded. By Friday, the Locklairs were concerned, as it was unusual for Sierra not to reply. Then, on Saturday evening, February 26th, Nick got a call from an unknown Indiana number. I didn't automatically panic because I thought they were still in Georgia, Nick said. So I answered it and they said it was the police, and that's when they told me she was missing. The policeman said Sierra's husband had reported her missing. The family was shocked. They thought Sierra was still in Georgia, even though she hadn't responded to their messages, which was unusual for her. What's completely baffling, Shelby Campbell said, is that he didn't call anyone to check on her. He didn't reach out to anyone. He didn't make us aware at all. After talking to the Carmel police, Sierra's father called his daughter. Xavier answered him. That's how Nick described that brief conversation with his missing daughter's husband. I said, Xavier, tell me the truth. What's going on? Sierra told me if anything happened to her, that you were responsible for it. So just tell me the truth. And he told me to go to hell and hung up. After that, Nick called Xavier's father, who lived next door to Sierra and Xavier in Carmel. He said, no, I never saw her, Nick said was the father's response. According to a press release on March 2nd from the Carmel Police Department in Indiana, Xavier Breland reported Sierra as a missing person to their office on Saturday, February 26, 2022. During the investigation, detectives found a video recording that captured Sierra's last known location. It was her mother-in-law's house in Georgia on February 24th at 7.17 p.m. Nothing unusual happens in the video. According to the Carmel Police Department's official missing person report, Sierra left their home in the Brookstone Park of Carmel Subdivision in Carmel, Indiana, shortly after 10 p.m. on February 25th to walk to the nearby store. She reportedly was in a black top and purple shorts at temperatures close to 20 degrees that night. Police said Sierra never arrived there, and there was no surveillance video of her entering the store. They were also concerned because her phone, work phone, and burner phone were all left behind, along with her ID, credit cards, and five-month-old son. Family members said she had the burner phone to contact them in emergencies. There was no evidence that Sierra had returned to Indiana. Her family knew that she wanted to stay in Georgia. Moreover, 
Sierra definitely wouldn't have left without telling them. Even more suspicious was the fact that she had left her five-month-old son. According to her mother, it all sounded absurd. Kelly Locklear said her daughter confessed to her the couple was having dire money issues and accused her husband of being abusive towards her and using their child as leverage to get her to stay with him. Kelly said she and her husband knew their daughter was dead after police called to say Sierra went missing, leaving her child behind. She's definitely gone, Kelly said. That was the first thing my husband said when police called after Xavier reported her missing and the officer said she had walked away without bringing the baby. She wouldn't even take a shower and let anybody else watch the baby. Kelly described Sierra as a loving mom who lived to care for her son. She said Sierra woke up every hour or two to check on her son when he had a rash. So when they said that, my husband said, no, no, there's no way. My daughter, she would not do that. If that's the case and you're telling me that she's missing and the baby is not with her, then my daughter's dead. She would not leave him, Kelly said. On February 28, 2022, two days after reporting Sierra missing, Xavier saw police officers at his door. Court documents indicate there was an accidental discharge of a firearm at a home on Baldwin Lane. Xavier told investigators he was moving a Christmas tree in the garage when he heard a gunshot and ran outside. Then he returned to the garage, located the gun, and unloaded it. He called the police himself and reported it. Investigators found two different guns in his house. The police did not disclose whether there was any evidence indicating Xavier's involvement in Sierra's disappearance. However, it soon became known about his criminal past. Court records indicate Xavier's conviction on felony burglary charges in 2005. It was also strange that Xavier reported his wife's disappearance only the next day, after she allegedly did not return home after going to the store. A few days after the police received a missing person report, Xavier was named a person of interest in his wife's disappearance. They arrested him on an unrelated charge. Police discovered he had an outstanding warrant for aggravated stalking in Coweta County. He was extradited to Georgia to face those charges. Court records indicate he put a tracker inside a stuffed animal belonging to his daughter to track her mother, his ex-wife. The case stemmed from a custody battle between the former couple. On Friday, two weeks after Sierra's disappearance, police, volunteers, family, and friends searched several neighborhoods in Johns Creek. Their focus was two neighborhoods along Medlock Bridge Road, which police believed Sierra may have traveled through during her stay in Georgia. In addition to passing out flyers, the Johns Creek Police Department set up electronic signs at two places along Kimball Bridge Road, asking for the public's help. They also have contacted several commercial electronic sign companies to help plaster Sierra's face and information across Metro Atlanta. The family asked anyone who saw the white 2017 Volkswagen Tiguan with Georgia tag RMB5869 during that time to call the police. The vehicle had in Florida State University Law School frame around the license plate. Police said that during the investigation, forensic investigators searched the car for evidence and released it. Since Sierra's last known location was at her mother-in-law's house in Georgia, police assumed the reason for her disappearance might have been something that happened in this house. They traced the route Xavier took back to Indiana and couldn't confirm that Sierra was in the car. Xavier was the only person who got out of the white Volkswagen at gas stations and shops. Details regarding the level of cooperation from Xavier Braylon's mother during the ongoing investigation remain unclear. However, law enforcement officials confirmed the collection of evidence from the residents through a search warrant. In their pursuit of answers, Johns Creek investigators involved forensic professionals and cadaver dogs in the search. The focus was on uncovering potential bloodstains, signs of a struggle, or any clues that could shed light on the events surrounding the couple's stay. Despite the involvement of a K-9 unit, authorities reported that the search did not yield a discernible scent trail at the residence. The specifics of the evidence gathered during the search remain undisclosed as the case is actively under investigation. In March 2022, 
Investigators got a hold of a jailhouse video that shows Xavier Breland telling his children that Sierra would not be coming home because someone had kidnapped her. It contradicts what he said to Carmel police about her disappearance. Somebody kidnapped my wife, he told one of his kids at the end of the call. You know what it means when you kidnap an adult? She's not coming home, bud. Xavier was booked into the Coweta County Jail in Georgia on March 16, 2022 after being extradited from the Hamilton County Jail for aggravated stalking. The case is not related to Sierra's disappearance. The charge stemmed from a March 2021 incident in Georgia when he hid a tracking device to stalk the mother of his child. At the time, the woman he stacked had a restraining order against him. In August 2022, he was found not guilty. However, he was arrested again and extradited to Indiana. This time, the charge was related to unlawful possession of a firearm by a serious violent felon. At Breland's initial hearing, he pleaded with the judge to lower his bond to an amount his mother could afford. The court lowered his bond to $35,000, while prosecutors wanted it increased to $50,000. I just need an opportunity to get my life back in order, Breland told the judge. Breland said he could get a job as a truck driver if they let him out of jail. After considering the case, the judge set bond at $100,000. In February 2023, Xavier Breland was released after posting bail. This court decision had consequences, but I will mention them later. He was repeatedly interrogated in the case of Sierra's disappearance, but denied his involvement in it. His version remains unchanged. She disappeared after she went to the store. Several locations have been suggested to conduct a search for evidence into Sierra Brelin's disappearance. Georgia alone has more than 85,000 acres of state parks, nearly 2 million acres of land controlled by the U.S. Department of the Interior, and more than 300,000 acres of undeveloped land. Fulton County along has 440 acres of parks. There are also hundreds of thousands of acres of railroad and utility easements, both used and unused. Of Georgia's 37,295,360 total acres, a good 15% to 20% are covered in vegetation. This does not include Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana, other areas driven through by Sierra Breland and her husband. If we knew her last known location 100%, then we would push the investigation in that direction said Johns Creek Police Lieutenant Gregory Todd Hood. Without going into details, Kelly Locklear said law enforcement has collected evidence and statements in multiple states, but they're essentially pieces of a puzzle without knowing the full picture. Some items were taken out of Xavier's mom's home, which was revealed in court documents from a civil case after Xavier's mom sued Xavier's sister. Crime scene investigation cut the carpet and mattress from Xavier's mom's home on April 21, 2022, as part of their search, according to the documents from the familial civil dispute. Immediately following the arrest of Xavier Breland on March 1, five-month-old Jackson was taken into state care. Sierra's parents Nick and Kelly Locklear have since been able to be with the infant and are working to bring the baby back home to Georgia. Over the last year, there have been multiple organized searches, some targeting specific areas, but still no clues as to what happened to the new mother. As investigators continue to try to piece things together, officers have been busy handing out flyers and even using electronic signs to try to raise awareness. Sierra is described by police as being five feet tall and weighing about 120 pounds with blonde hair. She has three little trees tattooed on her ring finger, a Florida State arrow tattooed on her left wrist, and a sunburst tattooed on her back left rib cage. The couple was driving a white 2017 Volkswagen Tiguan with Georgia tag RMB5869. And Florida State University Law School frame surrounds the license plate. Anyone who may have seen her or her car in February is asked to call the police. Xavier is the only person of interest that police have publicly named since Sierra disappeared, but no charges have been brought against him. Her family said they remain adamant that he knows what happened to her and that he is the only one who can give them the answers they need to find closure.
and finally let Sierra rest in peace. Kelly Locklear believes Sierra's body could be in Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, or Indiana. She's begging woodsmen and fishermen to be on the lookout in those states and call law enforcement with any tips. Sierra's parents have since been granted custody of the couple's child. As I said earlier, Xavier Brayland was released on bail in a case involving illegal possession of firearms. The trial in this case was scheduled to take place on December 28, 2023, but Xavier Breland did not appear in court, and his whereabouts remain unknown. A rearrest warrant has been issued in his name as law enforcement intensifies efforts to determine his whereabouts. This recent turn of events adds another layer of complexity to the already baffling case of Sierra's disappearance. Xavier Breland is described as a black man, six feet tall, 160 pounds, with brown hair and green eyes, the warrant states. The FBI is now involved in the search for the missing woman, although her body remains undiscovered. This, along with Xavier's recent disappearance, has given rise to numerous unanswered questions. Sierra's mother, Kelly Locklear, has publicly stated her belief that Sierra feared Xavier and had no intention of returning to Indiana with him. With both individuals now missing, the case has taken on an even more urgent tone. The trial concerning Xavier's gun charge has been postponed multiple times, and the law enforcement and Sierra's family are now reaching out to the public for assistance. They are seeking any information that could help locate both Xavier and Sierra in the hope of shedding light on the puzzling circumstances surrounding their disappearances.